Good evening, Munson here with the Good Evening Portugal expat phone in chat. Not much of a chat show, really. It's going to be uh, a monologue unless you get involved. But I'm particularly interested to find out, as you can see there, uh, whether we are dealing with a hero or a hacker, or as Ty pointed out quite rightly, a bit of both. Um, does it have to be binary? No, it just makes it, it just makes a good engaging um, headline, a uh, hero or hacker. And I totally own that, um, Ty, that um, it's something in between, isn't it? A bit of both. And it provides us with a starting point for the discussion. Rui Pinto on trial at the moment in Portugal. He's the man behind football leaks and Luanda leaks. And that's the first thing I want to do tonight, as well as uh, inviting you uh, to get involved in the comments uh, we do Good Evening Portugal um, every evening uh, from 10 o'clock no normally. Uh, on a Monday, we have a radio show uh, playing music, Portugal playlist on a Tuesday. It's a news hour, which this is. Uh, Wednesday, tomorrow night, will be uh, Hola Os Americas um, show, where we appeal to those people across the Atlantic who are interested in coming to Portugal. Uh, Thursday night, slightly earlier at nine, is our wine club. And Friday night, the expat sport report with Frank Devane, who may have something to say about uh, what is going on tonight. Um, I did have all my tabs set up um, to give you some background on this. And I'll have to just find them again because they are now misplaced. Um, and I was looking at some rather good coverage on something that I'm, I'm seeing on the TV, actually, Euro News. Uh, and as you might as you might guess, um, actually, I'm going to go to Wikipedia um, for better or for worse to find out more about uh, football leaks, which is where Rui Pinto started uh, between 2015 and 2018, apparently. Um, but I'll tell you more in just a moment um, after we've made sure we've said good evening to everybody who might be watching. And uh, just if you want to get in a, a bit of a preface and intro your your feeling on this at the moment before we discuss it um you know basically speaking as a starting point wh wh how do you feel about who the man who might be called portugal's uh, julian assange who of course is also on trial uh, what a, a spooky coincidence he's also on trial of course in in london at the moment for extradition to the <coughs> excuse me to the united states that wasn't some sort of coded message, was it? You know, um, I, I get to see, and don't ask me why or how, it's not important at the moment, but lots of these sort of conspiracy theory videos where people mention numbers and rub their noses and cough at certain points. Uh, I really was genuinely coughing. That wasn't a sign to anybody. Okay, so this man might be the Julian Assange of Portugal. And um, let's, let's, let's take a look at it. Let's look at the backstory. But as our starting point, have you heard about Rui Pinto, for, for example? Um, and do you view him as a hero or a hacker or a bit of both? Um, and uh, let's let's evolve that conversation. We've got plenty of time. Uh, we'll go through until 11 o'clock. Uh, we'll be on here for an hour and we'll discuss that. Or you may have something that I should know about. There's nothing to do with Rui Pinto, but is everything to do with life in Portugal. That's part of the news that you want to discuss, you know, because um, I have I have made the I've thrown the floor open. Um, to your views on uh, the the next stage of the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic situation. And of course, today, um, some serious, uh, <laughs> some serious um, uh, players, head honchos, big cheeses of the Portuguese government met to think about uh, the next way forward uh, as we go into the, the state of contingency and pre preparedness for the autumn and winter. And we find out things like, might there be mandatory wearing of masks? And will will there'll be lockdowns, spe specified local lockdowns? Will there be another national lockdown? Uh, big, big people in the government have been talking about that stuff uh, today. Uh, and I don't know, to be honest with you, if any announcements have been made. If, you, if you're combing the Portuguese news, and you've got something you think we should talk about, <coughs> um, do let me know. Cough, cough, message received, Carl. Thank you, Henry. Thank you for joining us tonight. And hi, Carl, from beautiful Fundau. Oh, I say, um, you're a lucky lady, Mag, to be in Fundau. This is where Shimajito have just announced their mushroom delivery service. If I may do a quick advert, only because I love those guys, um, 16 euros and 90 cents will get you a weekly delivery. So that's a month. That's your monthly payment. And you'll get a weekly delivery of 300 grams of exotic mushrooms. And again, that's not a secret message, exotic mushroom. I actually mean exotic, <laughs> exotic mushroom, right? You know, shit, shit, 
shiitake mushrooms. Okay, that sort of thing. Um, pardon my French. Uh, hey, missed this morning. So, boy, no, I love a conspiracy theory. Haven't heard of Pinto. Okay, so <laughs> put on your seatbelts. Let's let's check this guy out. And um, what more exciting could screen could I share with you than a Wikipedia page? Uh, but we can pour over this information together now, can't we? Um, and this this was big in football um, back what, five years ago. And I do have some comments, actually, from people from our Expat Sport Report page for Owen. Uh, Ty has been in correspondence tonight. Uh, the man like Frank Devane also has been um, chipping in with um, his thoughts on the matter. So more of those in a little while. And uh, let's begin here. So Football Leaks, this is where Rui Pinto first came to notoriety. I think he was using his um, pseudonym John <laughs> at the time. Uh, football leaks is the largest leak in the history of sports, revealing murky in inverted commas financial transactions in the in the world of European professional football, and exposes the tax tricks employed by some of the continent's biggest stars. So, relating directly to European football, um, it began with a series of investigations published in December 2016 and November 2018 by media partners of the European investigative collaborations, EIC, such as Der Spiegel, uh, Media Part, El Mundo, Espresso, uh, Falta, L'Espresso, and Le Soir. And I th you'll see there, yeah, uh, Der Spiegel is German weekly. Uh, Media Part is an independent French online investigative channel. Um, El Mundo, uh, Spanish, Espresso is Portuguese. Uh, so they broke the story here in Portugal. Falta is uh, from Austria. L'Espresso. <laughs> I'm really self-conscious. I normally only cough when I'm talking about um, COVID-19. And now I'm really self-conscious about coughing because of that silly joke I made about conspiracy theories. So bear with me one moment while I mute the mic. Just have a read of this on your own for a minute. Okay, that should do it. Um, and... Um, uh, just going back quickly to your comments before I move on. Um, exotic, funny secret shrooms. No, Mag, I said, like straightforward, delicious exotic mushrooms. Okay, no funny business, no no strange dreams or, or <laughs> I don't know, well, presumably, if you're a you might get a bad shiitake mushroom from, <laughs> to, from time to time. And, you know, who knows what might happen. But these are culinary mushrooms grown in Fundao where you find yourself and I think that's a fantastic deal I signed up straight away I need to find out that they don't deliver to Anadia from Fundao but they are looking into it and I might have them posted to me that's how much I love um, specialist mushrooms <laughs> not just that phrase I'm not helping myself am I uh, Neil Perkins already describing uh, Rui Pinto as a hero and I have to say good evening to you Neil by the way um, Cabriz at the ready for a Thursday night's wine club uh, and uh, was it you who, who discovered it at two ninety nine in the um, in the Pingadose Markdown section? Whoever did that in the Wine Ninjas, they are a hero as well. So thank you for your analysis so far, then Neil. And I tend to agree with you um, from what I what I've seen um, of Rui Pinto. He cuts quite a dash actually with his spiky haircut and everything. Um, initially, Football Leaks was a website containing confidential, confidential information about notable footballers and clubs. So it's a bit of a gossip site almost. Um, Rui Pinto, the author of Football Leaks, the man in question here tonight, was arrested in Budapest, Hungary, on the 16th of January 2019 at the request of the Portuguese authorities for suspicion of attempted qualified extortion, violation of secrecy, and illegally accessing information. And this, of course, is where the heroism uh, may fall a little bit short. Uh, and of course, you know, it's a charge. He's not, we don't know if he is guilty of any of these things at the moment. It is a matter of, um, you know, uh, of public record that he is now on trial for these things. So, you know, and we're just giving our opinion about that as, as this is all happening uh, in, in the Portuguese court. Um, so, yeah, the, when you hear of extortion, we, we wonder what he was up to um, with his involvement behind the scenes and, and, um, and possible the alleged hacking. Let me put it like that. He was ex extradited to Portugal and has been charged with 147 crimes by the public ministry. So let's have a look at the flavor of some of these and scale of some of these leaks. Uh, the website was set up, as I said, in 2015 and reveals transfer fee, wage and contract information about famous footballers. Now, that, of course, is always going to cause trouble, isn't it? It's a bit like, you know, at the BBC in Britain, when you find out what those people get paid, you know, the top stars are 
the BBC, and always the same argument is made, isn't it? Well, it's talent. You've got to pay talent. This is bound to raise the ire of fans, I think, and people. Um, its first leak was about third-party agreements between uh, FC Twente and Doyen Sports, which led to the Royal Dutch Football Association banning Twente from European football for three years. So pretty serious, right? And it affected uh, Man City, as well as we'll discover. Uh, football leaks also revealed that AS Monaco paid $43 million for Radamel Falcao rather than around 60 uh, million euros as has as had been estimated okay so um <laughs> what happens to, you know when you get short change in a restaurant and it's like 2 euros you get kind of you can get upset about that can't you or not but you you get the point you know it's like oh i've been diddled the, that's that's 17 million euros gone adrift there so maybe you know it's a, a matter of you know the bigger the the bigger the outrage the better for, for some people, you know, hung for a, a sheep as a lamb. Uh, in addition, the website revealed that when Neymar signed for FC Barcelona, he received an 8.5 million signing fee with a buyout clause of 190 million uh, euros. That's 152 million pounds. And that he earns 77,000 pounds a week. A leak revealed that Gareth Bale's transfer from Tottenham Hotspur to Real Madrid was over 100 million, more than 96 million the club paid for Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> the website also revealed that Ronaldo earned 1.1 million for doing a photo shoot with Mobley. I don't even know who they are. I hope they feel like they got some value. Another leak related to James Rodriguez transfer from Monaco to Real Madrid for 75 million plus 15 million in additional clauses. So, I mean, you football fans, explain to me what the outrage is because those figures normally make it to the papers, right? And they they are a matter of public record. So, what's the big deal? Is it just that the the, what get, get, what's generally gets to the public is not the true figure, and these are the true figures that get revealed, and that's what the leaks are about. Uh, do let me know. In January 2016, it was claimed that football leaks was being investigated by the Portuguese authorities over claims of blackmail and extortion. Okay. Uh, later in February, a league of the football professional president, Javier Tebos, blamed FIFA for the leaks of contract details of three La Liga players. In April of that year, the website announced that it was temporarily ce ceasing its leaks. Um, it makes you wonder what happened to prompt that. In November 2018, Football Leaks claimed that there had been undercover talks about the creation of a new continental club competition, the European Super League, which sounds like fun, from 2021. And again, football fans, what happened there? Frank, what happened there? Calvin, what happened there? In the same month, the website claimed that both Manchester City and Paris Saint-Germain were violating UEFA financial fair play regulations. So there you go. Uh, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to go into too much further detail i want to see what you think of that and your your um uh comments there because i also want to see um i wonder if um if, if just substituting football for luanda here will give us the um the gen on what happened with the luanda leaks as well <laughs> yes it does and isn't that wonderful how predictable uh wikipedia is so let's just i will um i will just um uh, have a look at your comments here and now and see what's going on. Um, Henry Jeffries, anywhere that there is big money, uh, there will be corruption. Whistleblowers are a good thing, but I feel that even they are open to abuse and control. Yeah, uh, maybe some people are thrown under the bus to protect the big players. No, <laughs> no pun intended. I see, I see what you mean there, Henry. Yeah, it does make you wonder, doesn't it? Um, and I think you're right in a little sort of insight into human nature and the human condition there. Uh, so I think we can go with that. Uh, no picking up my Cabris tomorrow, says Neil. Nice. Uh, and yes, you've now got the bargain price. You can always get two for the price of one. Uh, evening from Owen Lloyd Martin. Um, go on, boys. <laughs> every time it's a reflex. And every time Man City's mentioned that, Owen um, has, has a reflex. Go on, the boys in blue. Uh, and, and also now you have solidarity with Chelsea. Who, who would have thought I'd be saying that and that you might even accept that idea? Um, did you see that stripy strip, the blue and the pink? But I'm sure Frank will want to talk more about that with any Chelsea fans on Friday evening on the Expat Sport Report. OK, uh, yeah, I want to talk about um, Ty's comments as well. Let's have a look at uh, what went on on Facebook earlier on when I first posted uh, the idea that we'd be talking about uh, Rui Pinto and whether he should be seen as a hero or a hacker. Uh, Ty begins by saying, surely not a binary choice. And I said, no, it just makes a cracking headline. What's your view? And Ty, generous as ever with his view. Uh, I only have a very top level understanding, he says. Uh, I believe the same question is applicable to both men. And this is the comparison I was making with Julian Assange and um, 
Rui Pinto. Incidentally, what do you think is going to happen with Julian Assange? Now, uh, do you believe, for example, in life after love? No. Uh, do you believe in the idea that he is in, I was going to say, in like, I, I want to sort of protect myself from ridicule, but maybe that's that's just not possible <laughs> anyway, all the time. But some say, okay, I'll put it like this, some say that Julian Assange is Donald Trump's cousin and that part of the draining the swamp and all that sort of stuff and the QAnon and all that sort of business is is going to somehow erupt or be managed by Donald Trump. You know, even though, as I understand it, Julian Assange is being extradited for crimes against, you know, the United, the state of the United States and the government and the, you know, the authorities of the United States and the deep state, as it were, I guess. And he's, that's who he's offended. Um, will Will Donald step in um, if if it's to be believed that uh, they are crazy as it sounds? related and there's a lot of crazy stuff around and i do like to include it for your consideration because somebody might just be able to say donald trump julian assange cousins that that is not possible because x y or z back to ty's comment i only have a very top level of understanding i believe the same question is applicable to both men are they heroes or hackers a traitor to his country or a whistleblower and a person of the people i would i would imagine history has several examples where we could learn from or make a point of reference too, but I can't think of any at the moment, he says fairly. Uh, I tend to think that withheld for reasons of national security is overused and open to abuse by governments to control its population or cover up wrongs, but I'm open to listening to the counter argument. Excellent. Um, to which I reply, Ty, I'll read this out if I may, and he hasn't replied, so <laughs> forgive me if that, um, if that wasn't okay. I'm really, really sorry uh, in advance, uh, but you make an excellent point there, and I, I was delighted to share it. Uh, I hope you are too. Wow, I'd love to hear this as well, says Gareth, uh, but then takes the opportunity to complain about Mio being as slow as NOS. So th there's a bit of intel for us. Um, that's Gareth's leak tonight. That in his part of central Portugal, it turns out the mayor is as slow as Nos and he's not a happy man. I uh, read the story of the Luanda leaks. Did she get away with it? It was a huge scandal. Absolutely right. And we'll have a look uh, a bit further into that in just a moment. Uh, I haven't seen his story, but I read the scandal, says Gareth, uh, to add to that. Let me see. Anyone else commented there? No, not yet. Uh, we have, of course, a few comments about it on the, um, the matter of... Um, where are we? Uh, the expat sport report on this matter. And um, I need to go to that just to, just to tidy up. Uh, not the, not why Gary Austin doesn't seem to like Paul McCartney. Uh, not that thing. Uh, although that's, that's a very interesting question as well. Somebody asked that, you know, you can tell a lot about a person, can't you? Whether they are a Le uh, McCartney or Lennon person, I think. And in my life, I've, I've, I don't think I've settled on that. Um, yeah. And I'm not going to get, <laughs> I'm not going to get drawn into that right now but you can if you like um you can say are you a lennon or a mccartney type person all right so uh, as i posted in uh, the expat sport report uh, join us on friday for more uh, predictions passion punditry and pain of course as well we didn't do very well with the, the england res predictions and the result and how have england done tonight uh, by the way um frank says he provided this is talking of Rui pinto he provided the evidence that fairly resulted in City's ban, Man City, of course, later overturned by Shake Deep Pockets. <laughs> I do. I do. I think it will be telling in the months to come. Um, and he is aware of Rui Pinto, is, is uh, Owen Lloyd Martin. Is he a hero or a hacker? Hero to Owen Lloyd Martin, despite the uh, debacle with Man City, his beloved team. Uh, corruption within UEFA, as well as the teams involved, including City, is what uh, he, he pointed out earlier on. And I think we've covered that. And, um, yes, yeah, some more comments here. If human nature abounds, then you think you're making the big bucks and realize next man is getting paid more than you. You can become an incensed turncoat to get your cut, maybe. And I, I like these predictions of what might happen to us <laughs> at some point. Who knows? Maybe some of you have already been there and you want to report from first hand experience how you resisted, you know, being corrupted in a, in a, in a place of high office or whatever or, or the or not. It's like, yes, I rolled with it and it was pretty bad, but I got a new extension car and several holidays. Uh, who would who would own up to that? I suppose I mean, someone who's retired now, maybe <laughs> who doesn't care anymore. Um 
Okay. Um, I don't quite understand that. Owen. Oh, no, my life, lol. Sing him. I've got to go back. I've got to. Oh, the boys in blue. Uh, oh, I see. Okay, the boys in blue, as in, <laughs> I think that's a hint um, towards the long arm of the lawn. We'll just see how long that is, won't we, in relation to Roy Pinto in the coming uh, weeks. I'm, I'm sure it'll go on for months. Uh, and, and similarly with Assange, it's not going to be over quickly, is it? Um, and uh, Neil adds, just maybe some of the powers that be that are trying so hard to keep Pinto locked up and in solitary are just worried that if he gets out, just what else he may uncover. And this happens, of course, doesn't it? I don't, I don't want to um, mention Epstein, but yes. And, you know, in it, the compar- it's not a comparison I'm, I'm, I'm making particularly, except for the fact that when someone gets locked up who could spill some awkward beans, um, terrible things can happen, uh, which is maybe what you're uh, alluding to there, Neil. Uh, I, I do love a random comment, neither, but Linda... Oh, I see, I do understand. It's not so random. Uh, neither Lennon or McCartney, but Linda's sausages are quite lovely. Yes, the legacy of Linda's sausages. Is that, Gary, is that not a reason uh, for... Um, giving uh, Paul just a little bit more love than you have been giving him so far. Uh, So there's a link to WikiLeaks there. Thank you very much, Henry. Uh, That's in our comments, uh, and uh, and that should contribute towards our shadow ban or cancellation in due course. So thank you for for that, Henry. Let's have a look at um, Isabel de Santos now. Uh, She was born in 73 and is an Angolan businesswoman, Africa's richest woman and the eldest child of Angola's former president, Jose Eduardo dos Santos. Now, bear with me on this. You, you have to hear the scale of this. And I hope it's, I, I don't want to, you know, how boring is a radio show that just reads out a Wikipedia page? But I, I need to get to the, the, um, the, the essentials here somehow. Um, to, just to illustrate for you what went on with this woman and her family and the, and the scale of the scandal that she's involved in. Because I remember seeing a TV show about it um, here. I think it was a BBC one, actually, and I watched it in Portugal. But uh, her father ruled the country, uh, one of um, uh, Portugal's former colonies, of course, Angola, from 79 to 2017. And therein lies, you know, all all former colonies and the sort of pillaging of colonies and so on. You know, I... I I, I say that as a generalization, as um, as a British person. Um, but that's part of this picture, I think. In 2013, according to Forbes, her net worth had exceeded two billion US dollars, making her Africa's first female US dollar billionaire. And obviously that's not as big as being a British pound billionaire, but it's still pretty significant, right? Forbes described how Dos Santos acquired her wealth by taking stakes in companies doing business in Angola, suggesting that her wealth comes almost entirely from her family's power and connections. Well, I never. In November, in November 2015, the BBC named Dos Santos as one of the 100 most influential women, <laughs> women in the world, certainly if nothing else in terms of buying power. Uh, the Angolan government has since 2018 been trying to prosecute Isabel Dos Santos uh, for past corruption crimes that may have led to Angola's ongoing recession crisis. <laughs> well, um, no SH1T Sherlock. I imagine it's got something to do with it, right? Um, however, she remains in exile in Portugal. I could have, she might be down the shops when I'm there, but with the mask on, it's easier for anyone in exile, obviously, at the moment. You know, when, when you think about who might be for and against wearing a mask, any, anyone in exile at the moment is loving it, aren't they? Um, that they could go out with a mask on, which a year ago, they would have looked pretty silly. And you'd be thinking, what is that person hiding with that surgical or that pseudo-surgical mask on? Now, anyone in exile or wanting to keep a low profile, incognito, whatever, can just swan about the place uh, with a mask on. Did you think about that before? On the th- And maybe that's why it's happened. Maybe- <laughs> no, I'm kidding. On 30th of December 2019, the Luanda Provincial Court ordered the freezing of De Santos' Angolan bank accounts and the seizure of her stake in local companies, including Unitel, Banco de Fomento Angola, uh, and, and Banco de Fomento Angola. Ouch. Now, if she was smart, as often people are who amass such wealth, it probably won't all be in the Angolan bank accounts, to be fair with it, <laughs> suffering the possibility of freezing. You know, that's for, that's for mere immortals and muggles like us, right? 
um, where, where the money's in the bank and we trust, you know, we've not, with no basis for doing it, we trust the banks to look to look after it. Um, I speak personally. You may have other strategies that you may wish to share me by private with me by private message. De Santos has characterized the charges against her as trumped up charges. I wonder if there's a pun intended in that, uh, which were based on fabricated com documents. Uh, she describes the seizures of her assets as a politically motivated attack. In the meantime, she's under investigation in Portugal and has since assumed, oh, okay, she's gone again, since assumed the United Arab Emirates, the UAE, as her official country of residence. Uh, two weeks later, the Angolan government announced it was preparing a legal battle for the confiscation of De Santos's assets in Portugal, a process that is already in operation in the form of letters, Regoratory, learn something new every day. <laughs> well, I say I learned, so I still don't know what it means. If anyone care to explain to me or look up what letters regoratory, in fact, I just need to hover on that, don't I? Letters regoratory or letters of request are a formal request from a court to a foreign court for some type of judicial assistance. The most common remedies sought by letters regoratory are blah, blah. Okay, so one court speaking to another, basically. Um, sent to Portugal to stop the transfer of funds from Portuguese commercial bank to a Russian bank. The plot thickens. The plot thickens. Incredible. Okay, so let's let's fast forward to... I bet you're relieved I'm not going to read this whole darn <laughs> Wikipedia listing to you. Uh, on the 19th of January, the international... Sorry, of 2020 of this year, the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists. Now, God bless them, right? There are still people around who can be bothered to form themselves as a consortium of investigative journalists. Because let's face it, they are not going to be highly paid, are they? I would I wouldn't have thought uh, in jobs in in the mainstream media. You know, it's like when I'm sure when a lot of young people are dreaming of being an investigative journalist, their parents and their teachers are saying, "Are you sure <laughs> you want to do that?" You know, you could go and write um, some puns for the sun and get paid a whole lot more and it's a real test of your ethics isn't it to see how long and how old you can you can maintain the wish to be in the consortium of investigative journalists and i and i say god bless them for people who have such ethics and are willing to um grasp that nettle and shake it and then write about it uh, they published a detailed report on how santosh amassed her wealth over the years the report uh, which is called luanda leaks provides evidence of how she made a fortune at the expense of the Angolan people. Uh, the night of the 22nd of January, just a few days after the leaks, her personal wealth manager, Jeepers, um, and private banking director, Nuno Ribeiro da Cuna, was found dead in the garage of his house. Yikes. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, yeah, the word murky was used earlier on, was it not? And um, that's pretty grim that's pretty grim so far so let's let's fast forward then and see what we can find out about uh rui pinto's uh situation prognosis and so on um what else have we got here uh in oh in my life beatles oh yeah thanks everyone <laughs> thank you for bearing with me a bit slow on the uptake sometimes um link to some interesting documentaries that's fantastic henry keep putting those in the comments um you know, where someone actually might look at them. You know, when you're on a YouTube, <laughs> you're on a YouTube video and you you, look, you should check this out. And you see that, like, you know, millions of people are watching and your, your, your little link there is unlikely to be clicked on. Better chance here on the Good Evening Portugal live stream of sharing links among friends here. And people who are open to conversation, including the likes of Mr. Austin. Uh, corruption is endemic in most cultures from the very top of the tree to very local level. Portugal may be similar to Italy, he says, where at local level, large families have a lot of influence and power in the towns, villages, etc., where they can effectively control the business sector. <laughs> yes, there's a name for that, isn't there? <laughs> at some levels of that. And also, you know, it's quite natural as well, isn't it? You know, I think what, you, what you're saying there, Gary, is that can go to hideous extremes. <clears throat> but it's also an extension of our sort of primate past, isn't it, and how we operate. And I don't necessarily have a problem with the idea that, you know, there is a there is a level of what's it called when you give your mates jobs? Um, not hedonism. <laughs> That's something different. What's it called when you when when you when you when you've got the crony capitalism thing going on? I'm sure someone will tell me in a moment. Um, 
Yeah, and you know, that's only to be expected to a level, isn't it? And it's when, you know, I suppose looking at this in a different way, is is looking at the wide, widest and most widespread effect of such structures. You know, is is the town still working for everyone? Is are there massive um, differences in rich and poor and so on? Are the poor and vulnerable looked after? And in many ways, you could say, couldn't you, that the um, mafiosi types of approaches and they are of course all around the world not just the italian model but you, you could argue couldn't you that actually sometimes the poor and the vulnerable are better looked after under such systems than they are by actual governments um nepotism thank you so much it is nepotism sunny thank you very much for that um and also going back to um, paul <laughs> john and linda no wonder they got divorced if you have to invent your own sausage well hey <laughs> That's straight out of who would have said that? Um, that's an old school bit of comedy, that isn't it? But I love it. Um, she's here all week, everybody. Uh, don't try the veal because she's a vegan and she wouldn't like you for it. Um, Gary Austin, uh, no more about McCartney. Hmm. No more, no more. Uh, there were more than two Beatles. George Harrison needs some credit. My favorite, absolutely. Uh, this the, the the spiritual one, George Harrison. Uh, he, you know, he 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 wrote some amazing songs, didn't he? And seem to have a most a most incredible life awareness, life journey, adventure, and so on. Not quite as self conscious, perhaps, and more modest, you might say, than both John and Paul. Um, if we're going into favourite Beatles, and we open up <laughs> to all four, yeah, quite right. Good point of order there, Gary. And and Ringo, of course, inoffensive Ringo. Who, of course, it was said, you know, one of them was asked, is although the band were asked, you know is um Ringo the best drummer in the world to which the response was he's not even the best drummer in the Beatles but still um being in that band <laughs> took him a long way does it it's all about the band isn't it really rather rather than necessarily individual talent uh, picking the right band um we are not going into the craze are we yeah I, we're not we're not but you know I I see why why you've made that connection Gary and the, you know the sort of romance of yeah look after everyone and you know and it, look after the old dears no no swearing in front of your mum and make sure everyone's got a turkey at christmas um and that was an american gangster as well wasn't it uh which which i found quite a compelling movie but you know it is a romanticized notion and i think it might have <laughs> it might have some truth in it thomas the tank engine um <laughs> oh the coughing uh, thomas the tank engine um and i think if you if you kind of prank and make enough funnies in these comments i'm gonna be coughing all night so it's a mixed blessing really uh, your humor uh, for me uh, this evening but yes uh, you know another cultural um contribution from the beatles there the voice of course of ringo who i share a birthday with and so does uh sunny uh, here um we share all of us the three of us me sunny and ringo share the same birthday of the 7th of july if you want to put that in your diary now <laughs> so you manage hey uh Henry, we managed to put across the Thomas the Tank Engine moment. It's not twenty two twenty two on the clock, is it? Uh, oh no, we have to make wait for twenty two fifty five for the next message. Uh, Ringo, um, hold on, we're talking about corruption and the mafia and you know the downfall of the establishment, and we're still talking about Ringo. Ringo loved Thomas the Tank. More of a stones bird here, though. Paint it black all the way. Okay, yes. So there, I suppose. Um, there, I suppose, is another question. Are you a? You know, it's a whole. It's a. It's like psychological profiling, isn't it? To be asking this series of questions, John or Paul, Beatles or Stones. Okay, so let's open that up. Other questions that definitely. So two binary questions that reveal a lot about people's personalities. We have the first two. We have John or Paul, and we also have Beatles or Stones. And I think if we had 10 such questions, we could find out a lot about people just by asking those 10 questions. So let's get to the bottom of that tonight. Um, red or brown? I'm talking about sauce, of course. Uh, your ketchup or HP sort of person. Yeah. Um, butter or margarine? That says a lot about people. It really does. That says a lot about people's health awareness and how brainwashed they've been by by the um, <laughs> the food lobby or whatever they call themselves. Anyway, 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 back to um, 
stoned, not Beatles. I don't know if you, if that's what you meant to put, um, but psychological profiling there of Owen. He's stoned, not Beatles, <laughs> or it's a typo. So let me go to my blog um, to just go back to the links about Rui Pinto and what he's up against. And at this point, we bring in, and you cynics will be guffawing out loud as we talk about Portugal, the Portuguese government's efforts to educate people against corruption, okay? Uh, something I touched on, on. I can't believe I did all this on a Monday where people just want a little bit of light relief, presumably. But then, you know, for expats, every day is Saturday, is it not? Or Sunday? Yeah, every day is Sunday. Uh, but let me have a look at um, the trial now. Um, heightened security in place as Portuguese whistleblower trial. It says trail in the link, but it's the, I'm sure well, it could be a trail, <laughs> like a tourist thing. Go around and see where money was <laughs> trousered in various buildings. No, um, it's a whistleblower trial, not a trail. It opens in Lisbon. So this goes back a week now, but so we're well into it. Heightened security in place now for the Portuguese whistleblower, Rui Pinto, who's, and it was due to open. Oh, I say it's due to open. So this, what was the first? Let me have a look. Um, the first was, okay, so Thursday the 3rd is when this would have opened up. Um, and concerns for the 31-year-old Pinto, his safety, con concerns for his safety are paramount. Yeah. Um, actually, I'll put this on the screen for you so you you can read along as well. Um, certainly, that is not a, a binary, is it? Like, what is that, Elvis or Elvis? Because he is the undisputed king of rock and roll. <laughs> mask or no mask? Yes. Stones, red sauce and butter so far, we've got from Gary. Everyone's much more interested in this kind of... Um, Local radio. So, mate, um, what are you? Are you a red sauce or a brown sauce kind of guy? Uh, should we talk about corruption? No way, mate. Let's talk about masks or no masks. A non -a mask. I like that very much. Um, sounds like your autobiography. We came up with your autobiography, I think, the other day, didn't we? Um, and I can't remember what it was now, Gary. But, um, yes, Stone's Red Sauce and Butter is a very good name for your autobiography. Um, rule number one of the Anti-Corruption Club don't ask any questions. Of course. Uh, and there's me tonight, virtue signaling all the way by asking all these questions of everybody. Um, oh, I see. And is that to do with the binary questions as well, Henry? But like, we're not allowed to ask if you like the Beatles or the Stones. It doesn't matter. Don't answer. Don't give anything away. Okay, so heightened security. Um, I was going to share this with you. And if you can be bothered, I mean, you're all riffing now on the binary question, psychological profiling thing. But I'll put it on anyway, just <laughs> and see what happens. Um, as his lawyer, William Bourdon, Bourdon, has said, thanks to Rui Pinto's actions, many investigations have been and will be initiated, revealing huge financial scandals that cripple our democracies. Up until relatively recently, the young computer genius had been derided in the Portuguese press as a hacker. But it has become increasingly clear that his investigations, albeit unauthorized, have thrown up an insidious underbelly of corruption that has managed to operate in plain sight for years. And this is where it gets interesting, right? His Luanda Leaks dossier kick-started the probe, a word only ever used in the papers, unless in a different context, but yes, as an inquiry. It's, it's, it's like bungle, isn't it? Uh, probe that has since been Africa's former first daughter, Isabel dos Santos, charged with embezzling millions of dollars from Angola, as we, recent, as we just went through. And he has stated publicly that he has a lot more information on a lot of other intrigue in uh, bunny ears, particularly affecting Portugal. So, yes, you're right, Neil. People will be twitching about that. One of his champions from the outset. And I think this is a nice little aside. We may well have a female president in Portugal soon. Uh, the former MEP, Ana Gomes, uh, widely expected to challenge President Marcelo in the upcoming presidential elections race, has intimated that the whole system of Portuguese justice has been dancing to the tune of cash registers of a very special fund known to have Kazakhstan mafia behind it. I mean, the plot is thickening. The more we look into this, the more the plot is thickening. And I'm sure there's a whole lot, load more to it than this. Thus, the trial of young Mr. Pinto facing 90 criminal charges promises to be explosive. And I've seen no further um, coverage as yet. Um, and international media sources, including the New York Times, Der Spiegel, CNN, Reuters and Associated Press will all be vying 
for the 20 places reserved for the press in the courtroom on floor zero of Campus de Justicia, uh, while many others will have to make do with listening to the proceedings via video link from a building nearby, or like you lot, listening to week old news <laughs> on a live stream, on a, on a niche live stream. Shielded now under Portugal's witness protection program, Rui Pinto is expected to be delivered to the courtroom every day by police drivers who will be acutely aware of how dangerous their passenger continues to be to certain groups and individuals. His French lawyer, I mean, can you imagine that scene? Being in the car, being the driver, the police driver, and you've got Rui Pinto in the back with a blanket over his head or whatever, and you just want to ask him, you know, if you were that driver, what question would you ask Rui Pinto? Like the George Best question, where did it all go wrong? That sort of thing. Um, his French lawyer has already dubbed Rui Pinto the Edward Snowden of international corruption, who must be recognised as one of the greatest whistleblowers of the beginning of the century. Anna Gomez is one of 45 personalities who have purportedly agreed to appear in court in Mr Pinto's defence, as has Edward Snowden himself. Wow, so maybe by Russian video link, Snowden will be there too. The strategy of the defence will clearly be to demolish all the charges against their client and secure his acquittal. PJ Boss, which sounds like a children's telly programme, PJ Boss is a PJ Boss. Uh, Luis Neves, Neves has already prepared this scenario in an interview with Diario de Noticias in June, in which he called for a whistleblower's charter. So I think this is pretty awesome. You know, PJ Boss asking for a whistleblower's charter. And the next thing I'll share with you is Portugal, the Portuguese government's efforts to crack down on corruption. Well, I think these are interesting times. And I know you cynics will be like, yeah, whatever. It's all just like, you know, whitewash or virtue signaling, whatever you'd want to call it. But um, better that this stuff is going on maybe and a chance for it, for some of it to stick and a younger, uh, more ethical generation who are just sick of this nonsense coming through and picking it up and running with it maybe. At the time, never hinted that after the trial, uh, Rui Pinto will have a normal life in IT. Can you imagine? Um, you know, it just goes into WordPress websites for people and you can get Rui Pinto to do your... I mean, you'd worry, wouldn't you, that he had access to all your back office maybe uh, the unanswered question however is could this happen without the young man being given a completely new identity and how weird would that be if he does go into a new life uh, you know in it <laughs> like the it crowd and it's like if you try turning it off off and on again and you can just see his eyes can't you on customer support I'm like don't i know you your eyes are so familiar and he's like no just turn it off and on again and uh, call me back if there's any more problems bye Okay, let's have a look then at this um, this thing about uh, the Portuguese government um, uh, ahead of the whistleblower trial. The their plans to save eighteen point two billion a year that disappears through corruption, and I'll tell you about their national strategy in a moment, or our national strategy. I'd like to think, and. Um, uh, here's, this is good. This is a nice comment. Not wrong with this live stream. When I said niche, Owen, I meant, you know, in a good way. You know, we have a, a tight community here. And every probably in every sense of the word at various times, um, there is no democracy. The illusion is choice. Oh, my word. It's taking a turn for the worse. Don't go to the dark side, folks. Um, also want to be part of this club of yours. I will be the secretary. Which club have we started? Which club is this? Is this the wine club? Um, and I think there's a vacancy there, Amanda Marques. Don't expect um, a big brown envelope on, on arrival because we eschew such things, obviously, given the nature of our conversation tonight. It's a voluntary post. Uh, and I, goodness only knows what we do when people start sending us crates of wine to review. Presumably the only sensible thing to do is to open them, taste them, and tell people what we think. With full transparency. Um, can you imagine the day when the Matthias Rosé arrives? That is going to put the cat among the pigeons. Anyway, I want—I got to go back to this. Um, there is, th and thank you for that offer. Um, I want to be part of this club of yours. I will be the secretary. Fair play, um, Sunny Wolf. There is no democracy. The illusion is choice. Oh, so young, so cynical. Um, and these comments taken out of context would look like a plethora of secret cough cough messages. There's method behind my madness, Henry. I can tell. Is it 22.55 yet when the special announcement comes out? Not wrong with this live stream. Going back to that, absolutely not, Owen. I love, I love, love, love our um, community here. And, you know, I, just, I, I think small is beautiful. 
<laughs> but I'm open to experimentation. Um, oh, Jason, hello, good evening to you. Check this out, everybody. Um, I'm making more than $5,000. Funny this should come up right now. If you have Bitcoin wallet, blockchain wallet, Paxful wallet, Coinbase wallet, I do have some of those, maybe. Uh, you can make up to 5,000 Bitcoins with your phone or computer. Isn't that amazing? There's the number, everybody. Um, should we tell Jason that we've also got a bridge for sale in London that he might be interested in with all these Bitcoins? Um, and I, you know, I'm thinking, if I can make more than $5,000 in 24 hours, I'm not sure I would be creeping around niche live streams, posting up comments of this kind. No offense, Jason. Uh, don't you think this is a bit like a script from The Untouchables? I don't know that movie very well. That's Sherwood Lush, The Untouchables, yes, um, with Sean Canary in it. Tell us more, Gary. But I, I would, I would think so. He is, he is the what the mafia buster in that movie, and doesn't like a bit of corruption. Uh, you know, I, I do like those sort of movies. I loved L.A. Confidential, um, and you know how um, the, the good cop bad cop combo got to the bottom of all that and i do think that challenges our cynicism and keeps our faith alive doesn't it in in you know the the bad guys being taken down possibly um just call jason <laughs> on that whatsapp number <laughs> and how much have you earned if you if you took him up on his offer henry and um he's making more than five thousand in 24 hours that's not a bad hourly rate um you and, and you've enrolled you you're I imagine you've made quite a bit so far and you say he wants to join the wine club. Marvellous. And maybe Jason can buy us all a bottle of the finest Portuguese and get it couriered to our houses so that we can have a special uh, welcome Jason edition <laughs> sponsored by what is it sponsored by the $5,000 Bitcoin club. Marvellous. Um, for all homesteaders, mother cat. Oh, mother cat is back for food, obviously, but no kittens. You know what, Owen? We can think the worst with these sorts of things, but she's probably secreted them away somewhere safely. Um, like I said this morning on, on the on the live stream on Good Morning Portugal this morning, we do worry, don't we, about the wisdom of these wild creatures, and often they do know better than us. So that's where I'm going to put my hope and faith is that she's um, secreted her kittens somewhere and just come back for a bit of grub. Looking after herself first. Put the mask on yourself first before giving it to someone else. Mum's got to feed herself, produce some milk for those little babies, all right? So hopefully they're they're hidden away. Keep us informed. And you, Gary, with your, your kittens as well. Crates of Bitcoin so far. Yes, of course, that's going well then. Well done. Oh, the Anti-Corruption Club. Uh, that is what um, Amanda has offered to be the secretary of. Okay, uh, let's give it a go. We do do a psychological profile, of course, uh, for any applicant of the Anti-Corruption Club asking such questions as, are, are you a John or a Paul person, a red or a brown source person, a mask or no mask? Okay, so full transparency and wine flowing. Okay, I am now definitely in that club. Yes, you know, with wine flowing, that does tend to lead to full transparency, in my experience, <laughs> sometimes more than you want. What? You've never seen my untouchables, says Gary. Oh, no, the untouchables. Um, Gary, I don't. I I think I've seen glimpses. I feel like I've seen it. And you know, have I? Have we got Sean Connery in tartan and a tartan hat, almost like a Peaky Blinders vibe going on? Uh, is that is that the one? And and yes, I'll, if you think I should watch it, I'll watch it. I trust your judgment. I have a box for sale. Previous owner Pandora. What Bitcoin would Jason suggest? That box got opened long ago, and the only thing left in it is hope, Sonny. You can't you can't try and flog that off here. Try eBay. <laughs> Kevin Costner playing. Yes, the one face of Kevin Costner. And it, it's so, so Sean Connery's not in it. Okay. Um, I've got to look it up and f I've got to find it and, look, and watch it. I, I'll take your recommendation there. This time next year, myself and Jason will be zillionaires. Next year, at that rate, it, with, with his predictions there, I think you're looking at what? Um, middle of next week uh, for zillionaire status. Uh, have seen Dave a few times, but no kittens. I fear the worst. Oh, I suppose, you know, that's nature too, isn't it? And um, as sad as that is for us human beings, um, I don't know. Uh, let's not give up hope just yet. Let's let's hope for a born free moment when, you, when you're sat in your garden thinking about those little kittens and you sit there for a little while, a little wistfully, Gary, and then before you know it, they're 
playing with your shoelaces again. I hope that's that's how it turns out. Let's keep let's keep the flame of hope alive uh, for those littles, uh, both in Villa de Rey and in Alvarezra. Good question, Owen. Where's FD? <laughs> um, I don't know. Sometimes Frank gets a bit unfiltered uh, in terms of booze consumption, I suspect, and um, might be having a little snore on the sofa right now. And, you know, he's a, he's a busy man. And, you know, as long as his commitment to Fridays is good and, and the occasional show on uh, showing up on the um, morning, I'm good with that. I'm good with that. He's made his comments and we have shared them. But it's, it's a good question. And he might hear he might he hear his name being mentioned, right, and just go, what, 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 what? <laughs> of course, he's a Canadian, so he doesn't go, what, 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 what? But uh, whatever the Canadian equivalent of that is, um, Lion King moment. Yes. Yes, those little kittens come back. Um, yes, another psychological profile. Are we, are we there yet with the 10? Um, if anyone could put those in, in the comment thread, that would be awesome. Yes, the, the ultimate um, personality test, right? Cat or dog person, really, you know. And you can't – I don't think anyone can sit on the fence. I mean, people can show kindness to both um, species, right? But really, you are a cat or a dog person. And I have my theories about this, which, you know, at at, uh, seven minutes to 11, we're not going to go into that. It could be a theme for another evening. Uh, How can we talk about corruption when our glorious UK is bent as a bottle of crisps? (laughs) You do have a marvellous turn of phrase, Mr. Austin. (laughs) What was it? Sparked out like a dead pope, flat out like a dead pope, and now bent as a bottle of crisps. Are these brummy expressions? They're priceless. Absolutely priceless, Gary. So quickly, I do need to go to um, this um, strategy to combat corruption. Whether you cynics like it or not, f- fabulous. Carry money has no borders. Um, not even, um, not even, you know, so that you think the free flow of brown envelopes will continue Brexit or no Brexit. I think that's what you maybe are saying, Henry. Um, Hen- Henry is a dog person. I would have guessed that, Henry. Me too. Uh, maybe if I sing Blue Moon, FD will join us. Give it a go, Owen. Ring me up and sing it down the phone. That would wake any Man United fan up. <laughs> or, or just have them thinking they're in a nightmare. Mad as a box of frogs. Is that a brummy statement as well? Um, some, for, the, for our Portuguese friends listening to us, these are some of the idioms of the English language which we're sharing with you. And we invite you to do the absolute same with us to treat us to some of your wonderful um, idioms of your language, some of the idiosyncrasies. So, yes, national corruption strategy. Here we go in the closing minutes. Has this got legs, folks? You decide. Is that another one of our questions? Do you believe we can end corruption or not? That's the, that's the clincher, isn't it? Um, national strategy to combat corruption and save 18.2 billion a year approved ahead of whistleblower trial. Less than a day. So this is going back to the fourth, only four days ago. I'm right on the cutting edge of me. Less than a day before the trial of whistleblower. Oh, it's 22.55. <coughs> Did you get that, Henry? Um, less than a day before the trial of whistleblower Rui Pinto opened in Lisbon, the Council of Ministers finally approved Portugal's national, was that a sign? National strategy for the combat of corruption. Says Eco Online, it's a package aimed at avoiding state expenditure of 18.2 billion a year and will run from now until 2024. The one of its cornerstones will be a whistleblower's charter legally protecting people who come forward to denounce corruption in organizations they may be involved in. Stresses eco. This is not actually the case with Rui Pinto, who came by his explosive information through illicit acts, in this case, computer hacking. Allegedly, though, right at the moment, but Pinto is claiming whistleblower status and he has some powerful supporters behind him. Is this, is he, how are you singing us out with Blue Moon? Like, that's my phone ringing, as you can hear there. Um, let's, should we find out who it is? Let's find out who it is. Hello, hello, bon night. Good evening, Kelly Owen. So have you come seriously come on to sing, sing the blues, as it were? <laughs> no, I just, I, just thought, I just thought I'd come on just, just, just for the hell of it, just to... You know, well, you, you're welcome to the dying minutes um, with, with us now. Let's read this story together, maybe. How are you? How, how, sure are, how, how, how are you doing? How's, how's your, how are your eyes? They're, 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 they're okay, actually. I've, I've had, uh, well, suspected conjunctive eyes, it's not confirmed, but I've had mornings of, of, I think it's been with the heat and everything else. Yeah. I've just woke up in the morning and, and, and we've had the cats around as well. So I actually have an allergy to cats, although I love them to pieces. Are you a cat man? Are you a cat man? 
No, I'm a border collie man, but I do love cats. <laughs> He's a border collie man. <laughs> that is so specific. <laughs> Gary so, Austin. Uh, Sorry, Gary's asking us to bring the show to a tight end. Don't I always, Gary? Actually, I can be a bit loose. <laughs> I can be a, a bit loose and flappy um, at the end sometimes. It's true. Um, but, yeah, sorry, Owen. Go on. No, no. So, so I've, 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 I've had that. I've, had, I've been treating it, treating myself naturally over the past uh, three, four days. And it seems to got better, obviously. I've, I've managed to get out today and do a bit of shopping, have a look around and, and do what you do to try and get on here in Portugal. But, yeah, it's been it's been a, a, a good day. Health getting better, feeling a lot better. Apart from the cats, the kittens not being around, that's been a bit... Give it give it time, mate. Give it time. Uh, Henry... Well, it, it, you, you, see, you see female cats, you know, when they've got the kittens, that's it. Nobody's getting close, so Absolutely. they are somewhere close. You couldn't have took them far because they're quite good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she needs. She uh, cats are very sensible. Like I said, you know, they make sure they get fed themselves, don't they? So they can produce some milk. <laughs> so. Well, that's it. I mean, she she's like she she's been back. Like I say, she's been back. But um, as for the little ones, we, we've not seen them. But I, I can only suggest that they've, they've you know, that they've been moved to somewhere safer because they, they're, they're quite big dogs. It's not like you know, as you were explaining this morning, it's not like the um, uh, the Jack Russell and you know. With the pack dog, and you get little get little yes, yes, dogs. Yes. Yeah. So you know, it, 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 it's bizarre because it's funny because um, it was late evening last night, and I heard a bark from outside, which I thought was a bit close. Yeah. But didn't think anything of it because it wasn't a natural evening sound. If you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Here you find that. Um. So and then to to, to hear um uh, Brendan say this morning that you know the dogs I, I had to chase the dogs out last night. We've got to put a gate up. Yeah, and it was like, oh damn! So obviously not seeing the kittens around, it's been, it's been quite mad. Well, hopefully, yeah, it's been uh, good. Yeah, hopefully they're just scared off. Um, I, I, I'm not sure if I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give up on this corrupt reading this corruption story because actually, what I want to find out, and uh, Jeff may may well have something to say on this. Who says, "Hola and good night from me and the cats." Uh, a cat man, <laughs> cat man, do as him, yeah, as he's putting <laughs> it. Um, Is he, Jeff here yet? Uh, no, no, I don't think so. Not yet, but uh, any any minute now, any minute now. Um, and and uh, there's, I, I want to ask you the question. You know, what is the natural way to deal with um, eye irritation and inflammation? But before we do, just a, a couple more comments. Um, Henry says we. I think we could do a whole show on colloquial sayings such as "face like a bag of spanners" from Gary Austin. <laughs> That's unkind. Um, we could, and actually, what we could do is we could have a showdown, couldn't we? We could have. Brits versus Portuguese, although, you know, the, the Scottish ones would be different to the Welsh ones, different to the Irish ones, wouldn't they? So it might have to be English versus Portuguese battle of the colloquialisms. Who has the best in a showdown? But OK, so in, in, the, in the closing moments, because we do like a tight end. Um, what, is, what, what, is, what is the natural way to deal with conjunctivitis and uh, irritation in the eyes, uh, Owen? Warm salt water, um, drinking glasses of colloidal silver. Yes. Take it, take it with Crow Palace, take it with black seed oil, um, and doing my um, coconut oil, having my coconut oil in the morning. Just, just. That's a fresh spa. Food, That's a spa. Sunshine, man. everything else. Okay. So, uh, can other people check into the um, Lloyd Martin Day Spa with you and have, that, have that treatment? Dr. Martin. So, I do beg your pardon. Of course, yes, yes, indeed. Um, that sounds no. like um, a, a treat as much as a treatment. Well, it, it, it's just a healthy way of living. Out. I've, I've kind of missed that. You, you know my my history here in Portugal. Yeah, and I've and I finally got back to you know eating fresh fruit, eating vegetables from the garden, and and taking the supplements that I've managed to uh, secure. So yeah. Keep myself real healthy. And uh, another suggestion here: cold chamomile tea bags, which suggests you have to drink the bloody stuff first. We well, don't it have to. It grows all over the place up here. Actually, it grows all over the place. There's, there's, there's loads of things here. There's like the, the, the hawthorn flowers. Yeah. Oh, but there's everything. And 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 a, and a nice a nice thing to the old um, alcohol breath and getting rid of the old alcohol breath. <laughs> Grab what a couple of leaves of sage what? and chew it. Why are you giving that advice to me and us here? How, I wasn't. How, I was just thinking about FD. I was, thinking, I was thinking about FD. I wasn't thinking about FD. I was thinking about FD. Yeah, <laughs> cut blue moon. <laughs> you saw me standing alone. 
Without a dream. Sorry. Frank's, Sorry, Frank. No, Frank's worst nightmare. <laughs> no, he's coming round now, just as we're about to finish. Uh, and here, here's one you might not have heard of. If you're allergic to cats, rub a dog in your eyes and vice versa. <laughs> that, that's amazing. That's an old Devonian. I love it. I love old, it. That's, that's brilliant. That's an old, old Devonian folk cure. Uh, that see, that apparently allegedly works every time. Um, I think that's also how another one of um, Jason's income streams through an MLM, an MLM, an MLM, an MLM company that sells essence of cat and dog that you can rub into your eyes respectively from Jason. Oh, there. Um, and also, do you? I mean, we're blessed with aloe vera, of course, in Portugal. Do you snap off a stick and fillet it, and then rub that on your eyes as well? Is that a good one? Yes, as well. I also eat it as well. Do you? Yeah. Wow. What, what a vision you're leaving for us. You walking around the garden, slathered in coconut oil, aloe vera, <laughs> <laughs> with a couple of chamomile tea bags on your, on your eyelids. <laughs> and then, I, uh, I can tell you, I, I must, I must. <laughs> thanks, for that, thanks for that vision, Carl. Cheers. Well, the, postman, the, the postman just drops the mail and runs off. <laughs> <laughs> not, being, not going near there. There's a witch doctor that lives there. Anyway. <laughs> What I will say on the question of corruption. Yes. Yeah? Yes, yes. Let's finish it's on, about a, on bloody an erudite time. Name. Yes, go on. It's about bloody time. Okay. Not just Portugal, worldwide. And, and so you are not cynical. You are hopeful. The time has come. This, You know, the, 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 the kind of some of the sentiments behind some of the stories behind Donald Trump, that the, yeah. the swamp is being drained. And we will see the end of this, which many and most people are absolutely sick of. Uh, it's one of those um, um, back to the future moments. You know, the okay. McFly, yeah. McFly, yeah. if you know what I mean. Uh -huh. Okay. It, 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 you know, there's a message there, but, but not everybody's reading it. Yeah, but fair play. My view, my view, my view, well, my opinion. And I think we should leave it there because it's 2304 which adds up to nine, which is my power number, um, and will obviously magnify the effect of the sentiments you've just expressed. Good time to go on. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for calling in. I hope we've woken up, Frank. And um, thanks, everybody, for their wonderful comments tonight. Have you got a final binary pairing for, as a psychological test? The cat and dog one was particularly good, I thought. A mask or no mask. What, what, have you got anything from the kitchen? Um, red or, no, red or white, I will, I will, red or white is another, isn't it? I, I, no, yeah, I, you know, no, that's another bone of contention which I'm going to speak to you about. I've been wine, but I'll leave it. I'll leave it to the wine club because I, I need to come in and say a few things. Are you about, chefs about this food and about pairing? Oh, okay, fair enough. I like that. I like the sound of that. And you chefs, <laughs> uh, if you if you do agency work, you sometimes have to get used to saying chicken or fish, don't you, to people at a buffet or. <laughs> There's hardly any meat, red meat in my diet, Carl. It's, it's either fish and chicken or now. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> and I think is I don't know if Gary is recommending rubbing mustard in your eyes now. This is yeah, this is what happens. They get a bit random. These comments. Mustard. What's he saying there? I wonder. Oh, I see mustard. French, French or English. The fi ah. okay. Final word to you then, as a chef, as a man of the world, and as an insight into your psyche, French or English mustard. French. Okay, we'll leave it there. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Good night. Bye-bye.